Why do most healthcare professionals prescribe calcium supplements to help build strong bones in conditions such as osteoporosis, yet osteoporosis is so prevalent and the vast majority of us consume large amounts of dairy products and other calcium-rich foods? So why are we seeing an increasing number of bone problems, even in younger people, when we are consuming lots of calcium? Where is all this calcium going? The answer may have been discovered over 50 years ago. Back in the early 1960s, a scientist by the name of Professor C. L. Curverin, a French biochemist, published his thesis on biological transmutations, a process where one element is turned into another element. According to Curverin, mineral calcium is a byproduct an ash derived from the combustion of atomic processes within the body. And he goes on to say calcium is not assimilated by the cells and in fact calcium cannot enter the bones as raw calcium at all. Plants and other microorganisms utilize raw calcium, but in higher animals it exists only as a residue. Many scientists chose to ignore it because they could not understand its processes and were unable to test it in a laboratory setting. Instead, scientists chose their own assumptions for the likely processes for how they think calcium behaves in the body and bone formation. This could mean that some of the foundations in the study of biochemistry, or how biological processes occur in the body, was actually wrong from the start. This could be one of the reasons why medicine has poor results when it comes to treating or curing many chronic diseases. Biotransmutations have been noted as far back as the 1800s, when a French chemist noted whilst analysing the faecal matter of grain-fed only chickens, excreted more calcium than that was known to exist in the grain they were eating, and found elements that did not even exist in the seed. Possibly the first to verify the existence of biotransmutation was an Englishman by the name of Prout who studied the lime content of eggs and found that hatched chicks had four times the amount of lime in their bodies than that was available in the egg matter, and that the weight of the lime in the shell was unaltered. He determined that the matter in the eggs that the chicks fed off made lime out of some entirely different mineral. Professor Curverin established that bone fractures healed in less than half the usual time with the use of organic silica enhanced with a little magnesium and potassium. Perhaps Curverin is more well known for his high silica product, Curverin Silica, a product that was specifically designed to replenish soft connective tissue, hair, skin and eyes. The herb horsetail is one of the major ingredients in his product and is one of the highest sources of organic silica known. For many years, horsetail has always been used for broken bones and always healed rapidly and was verified by x-ray showing recalcification of broken bones when organic silica is administered rather than when calcium supplements were given. Dr. Plisnia, a Belgian specialist in dietetics, observed that children with decaying teeth who had normal amounts of calcium in their diets by the classic dietetic standards from calcium-rich foods including milk, cheeses and vegetables, as well as protein and vitamin D from meats and butter, continue to have dentition problems within a few months after all these calcium-saturated foodstuffs were removed from their diets and replaced with silica-rich foods, the children's teeth improved immensely. Hundreds of instances are now on record where a calcium low and a silica high diet has improved dentition and healed broken bones faster than when a calcium rich diet was advised. As reported by Dr. Plisnier and others, ingested calcium does not lead to recalcification of bones, teeth or any other part of the body. A startling revelation in this day and age of escalating bone and joint disorders now seen even in young children. Calcium plays a significant part in cardiovascular disease as calcium can accumulate in the walls of the arteries, aiding in the formation of plaque deposits and so on. Doctors now measure the amount of calcium in the walls of the coronary arteries and give it a score. This score determines your risk for heart attack or stroke. 
Calcium is very important for proper nerve function, including contraction of the heart muscle. It may be fair to say that the excessive amounts of calcium in our diets, such as dairy and other calcium supplements, is problematic and may lead to hardening of the arteries and other calcium-associated disorders like calcification of joints and calcium deposits in the muscle, which can be very painful. Some good sources of silica include dark leafy greens such as lettuce, spinach, cucumbers, avocados, onions and tuberous vegetables like potatoes and turnips. Fruits also contain silica such as strawberries, apples and citrus fruits.